Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jay from JS Films. Unreal Engine is starting to release their GDC presentations from last month. So in this video right here, we're going to be taking a look at the MetaHuman Animator just a little bit more in detail. All right. So the whole point of a rig is that you want to put animation on it. At least normally, that's how I think of it. Um, we, we really should be closing with more details on what revealed today in the keynote. MetaHuman Animator is a huge update to our Unreal Engine plugin. It is a true end-to-end -end system for performance capture, and it goes from your footage, through the ingest, all of the steps, to final animation. It comes with everything. Um, we provide camera calibration tools if you use stereo couples. Um, iPhones are calibrated by factor. We take that into account. Uh, new assets that represent your devices inside the project, ingest, through a convenient window, uh, creating a full rig from just the footage, which is what I was talking about before, tracking and solving the actor's delivery from footage in the new performance asset, generating animation directly on rig logic or on the face board. And finally, taking that animation and applying it to the control rig face board, if you wish, through the backward solve. Now, that is literally everything that you need for facial performance capture, we think so at least and you never leave the editor. You do all of these with a handful of assets in the editor, nothing else. So we're almost done. Uh, I think these are some of the most salient points. Now, why rigs in semantic space pay off? Uh, our rig parameters are in that space. That is to say, it is what is activating and where is that activation at in a normalized range, right? So space. Honestly, one of the things that, so I've watched a couple of these demos there's something that I'm not seeing yet. And that's the lip roll like this. If you watch even these ones up here, I'm not seeing a lot of lip rolls. Whenever you select like back, right? So check it out. It's in the editor, nothing else. So we're almost done. Uh, I think these are some of the most salient points. Now, why rigs in semantic space pay off? Uh, our rig parameters are in that space. That is to say, it is what is activating and where is that activation at in a normalized range, right? So you have like Joe up and down, zero to one, or things from one to minus one. That is opposed to things like geometric or volumetric approaches where someone might directly describe the position or the rotation or the, of the joints or of the solver points. The fact that this is in semantic space means that in practice, Every animation will always work the same on any rig logic or faceboard based rig. Um, well, that feature is probably one of my favorite features about MetaHumans is that you can take a facial animation and you can apply it to, as long as it's rigged to a MetaHuman, you can apply it to any MetaHuman and it works the same with body. That, that is such a great advantage, man, because you can share it across the board. Which of course is all of the MetaHumans or anything that you do that you're okay rigging in that space. No crumpling faces, no poor lip or eyelid seals or interpenetration or anything like that. Now, your animation might resemble the actor or actress the most when it is on their performer rig, the one that we create in MetaHuman Animator for the solving, but it just doesn't break when you move it on to something else that might be their actual character. Okay, so. Performance capture requires real-world devices. We'll talk very quickly about that. Uh, if you're interested in high-end devices, we support stereo couples. Uh, if you want to be more on the compact side of things or on the lower budget side of things, we support iPhone 11 and up. So iPhone 11 and up. And, and as you all know, I, I've, I've made some DIY rigs here on the channel with iPhones and, and with action cameras. This is going to be my problem again, right? So if you're using an iPhone on a skateboard helmet, which what I had, you're going to have to put a light in front of your talent, man. And that's what I kind of liked infrared. Working with infrared is I don't need to worry about that. <sighs> Mounting this, right, on a DIY skateboard helmet is going to get heavy. And, and, and this is just really one of the things that as much as I love using iPhones, I really don't miss having to do this setup here because even with a small, tiny LED light, it can still get pretty heavy. Um, everything in between, basically, workflow-wise, 
becomes possible. You can have some actors with stereo couples for your highest quality shots, um, or you can have actors with iPhones for ready pickups or things like that. You can set up audio booths uh, with performance capture on a tripod. Like what you're seeing there is literally the picture on the desk is literally what we use to test things. It's a tripod with an iPhone on top. You can have your performers work remotely by just sending them a small device, or they probably already own it, to be perfectly honest. And all you need to get back is some files, or they'll send you the device back. If you're head mounting, it will only provide you with a facial animation, and you're likely to get the neck from your suit. You don't want this to interfere. But if it's on a static mount, like a desk tripod, it will provide a very accurate estimation of the upper neck. Now, last few things. It's important to know this is a device agnostic solution. We chose to directly support the iPhone because they're convenient, they're widely available, they're very uniform in specs, uh, but we do nothing with it other than capture video and that. We're not using AR kit or anything like that. We support vertical stereo couples because they're some of the most reliable and available configurations, but we're not married to stereo in and of itself. We just do depth inference from it. So this release focuses on fidelity, first and foremost. Um, part of this is the quality of the results coming from our approach and the way we solve data. We don't do any processing on device, and the result, um, the quality of the results scales very well with the quality of the data. We don't hallucinate any details. We're not against adding post-processing things later on, but we felt that for the first release, we wanted to do something where you get the animation that represents exactly the performance that was put into it. While we do scale well with the quality of the data, uh, it is not done at the cost of resilience. So, of course, if your actor is covering their face, we're not going to hallucinate their eyes or something that is missing from the frame, but we recover from those things. You don't need to split takes, right? Having good lighting is nice, but this is entirely independent from what is happening in the background. You have bright lights, you have movement, it doesn't matter. It's perfectly resilient. When it comes to burning fat and building muscle for a guy, the biggest mistake you can make is just eating healthy. To all of that. Now, um, oh, sorry for that. Um, the quality of animation. When we say quality, we don't mean it in some vague sense. We don't even refer to issues like noise. We're particularly well behaved there too. But what we mean is that the function curves that come out of these systems are very well behaved. Uh, semantic space solvers can sometimes like, choose to interpret different poses that are temporarily adjacent with different controls. And when that happens, you'll see curves crisscrossing. Uh, we don't have that problem, just don't. Uh, the animation that comes out of this is always very good. It's always highly editable. Okay. So, last feature, audio to tongue, is what it sounds like. Uh, we solve basically uh, solely based on video and depth streams, which makes it resilient to things like audio slips or missing audio and so on. Chances are in your shoot, you do have audio, so we should be making good use of it. Part of the solution is audio to tongue animation. It will reliably produce tongue animation from just the audio track in the capture if one is present. And last but not least, our output is a plain animation sequence. Uh, MetaHuman Animator for now is closer to content creation than it is to runtime, and we know that you want unencumbered projects and builds. So once you're done solving a performance and you're happy with it, all you have to do is export the animation. It becomes a plain animation sequence and you're done. It's readily available, easy to be moved between projects. There's no need to do anything to it. All right, so that was a lot for half an hour, and I promise I just scratched the surface. We're on the expo area where you can see these live if you're interested. And with that, I'd like to get Matt in and thank you very much for your time. So that's the MetaHuman Animator. So MetaHuman Animator with MetaHuman Audio to Tongue. And it, it kind of makes sense, as you all know, like last year or whenever, I was kind of like wondering why Epic Games didn't make a move on Ziba Dynamics with their ZRT facial animation solver. Well, it makes a lot of sense because they have something in-house that they were building anyway. I'm pretty excited about this tech here. I'm obviously going to be making a lot of content about it, doing a lot of tests on it. You're going to be using it in my with my MetaHumans. And 
potentially be even using it for my next episode of my cyberpunk short film whenever i have you know get funds and actually creating that um but yeah this is huge this looks amazing but at the same time again it looks like <laughs> we're gonna have to go back to iphones again it, 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 again, it's it's a pro and con. It's a double-edged sword because, yes, it's it's going to be cheaper, more available, but at the same time, it's like, man, I'm going to have to have a light in front of my face. Um, I'm going to have to use my DIY skateboard rig again. Uh, but, yeah, we'll just have to see how it all works out. Uh, that being said, let me know in the comments below what you all think about this new MetaHuman animator and MetaHuman audio to tongue.